Welcome back to this Python tutorial series on constructing a recursive descent parsing algorithm for a calculator language. In today's video we're going to be introducing multiplication and division. So one thing we can do to our grammar is actually just add the multiplication and division sign to our operand and just go up here to our scanner and we're going to say if our next character If it's a multiplication sign, add that. If it's a division sign, add this. And the last thing we have to do is simply just go to our operand here, copy, paste, and now we're going to check to see if the operand is the multiplication sign or the division sign, and we change it as so. Now one thing we might do here is actually check to see if the float of the right dot value equals zero. And if it does, then we're actually dividing by zero and we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna create an error statement. We're gonna say, we're gonna print out error dividing by zero and we're gonna return none. And then here we're gonna have to go back so whichever function calls the operand function, we need to check to see if value is none. So we're going to say if value is none, return none. And this occurs if an error occurs if an error occurs in operand function. So here, this should actually be a working implementation. So let's play it out. We can say 5 times 5, 25. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 5 divided by 0. So here we have a problem. None type, line 303. We can say if value is none, return none. So let's do that again. Let's say 4 divided by 0. Error. Now let's say 3 minus 3 times 3. So here we get 0. And this is a big problem because in actuality, uh, we have different types of precedence in our operands. So the multiplication should actually evaluate first. So this should be 3 times 3, which equals 9. And then it should be 3 minus 9, which is negative 6. But in fact, our grammar operates from left to right. So this is a big problem in our grammar, and I'm going to show us how we can actually get around this. So the way we get around this is actually by introducing a new temporary uh, non-terminal. As we can see here, we add a new production, and it serves as a temporary. So we have our old grammar here. We have our new grammar. So we have the start. Start derives a term and a T1, where a term is a number T2, and a T1 is an operand one term T1. And we can see here it's right recursive because it calls itself again. Same here with T2. And operand one and operand two simply refers to the level of precedence for operands. So we can see here that T1 re refers to the first level of precedence for operands. So operand one is the addition sign and the subtraction sign whereas T2 is the second level of precedence, which refers to multiplication and division. And so now here is an example derivation of three minus three times three. We know that start derives term T1, and a term is a number T2. So we have number T2, and then our T1 follows through. The number derives three. The T2, we check to see, is it an operand two? Is it one of these? Is it multiplication or division? No, it's subtraction. We use an epsilon transition. Now T2 is gone. T1 follows through. T1 derives operand 1 term T1. Operand 1 derives subtraction sign. The term derives number T2. And the T1 follows. The number derives 3. T2 derives operand 2 number T2. As we can see here. Operand 2 then derives uh, the multiplication sign number derives 
T3, T2. Now since the next symbol is a 3, it's not an operand 2, so we use the epsilon transition. So T2 is gone, T1, we look for operand 1. Is it subtraction or addition? No, it's nothing. We use the epsilon transition. So now I'm going to pull up the actual parse tree of this, if I can find it real quick. There it is. So here we have our parse tree. And as we can see, we have different levels of precedence. So the multiplication and division is going to be at a higher level compared to the addition and subtraction. So and what how this is going to work is we're going to start it here. We're going to begin at start. We're going to go to term. We're going to go down to number. We're going to return 3 from term, pass 3 on to T1. And then T1 is now going to say 3 operand, which would be minus this value returned from t, uh, from term 2. So it's going to evaluate term before minusing. This way we have our level of precedence. So term is first going to actually going to get the number 5 and it's going to pass it on to t2 and then it's going to return this value. So t2 is going to say the previous value passed in which is 5 times 7 is 35. So then it's going to take 35, it's going to return it to term term is then going to return 35 to t1 and then we have 3 minus 35 in this way we can actually work around and uh, uphold precedence and associativity so it's going to return the appropriate value all right and now we actually have to implement this into our recursive descent parser so here we have our new grammar and if you remember from the last couple of videos for each production rule we have we need an equivalent function. And so our previous recursive descent parser was built our, off our old grammar. But now we've changed our grammar, and so we need to change all these functions. So to begin with, I'm going to put this onto the left side of the screen. And we, here we have our nice little derivation tree. And so to start, to begin with, we're going to begin at the start function. So the start simply looks at term and t1 as we can see well a start is a term where a term is a number term is always a number so we need to check is the first uh, token a number so we peek ahead we look at it it's a number yes except this time we're not going to consume it instead we're just going to call term and we're not going to pass anything to it instead we're going to store the return value and we're going to call this temp and what we're going to do is we're going to pass temp on to t1. So now the, re the true return value is going to be from t1. And we're going to pass on our iterator and our previous value from term. As we can see, we, we get the value from term, we pass it on to t1. So this finishes up start. Let's now look at term. Term is now a number or a t2. So we go here, we peek ahead. It's not going to be an epsilon transition. All it is is a number. So if we peek ahead and it's not a number, then this is an error. So we're going to return none. And we're going to print out error expecting number. And what we're going to do here is we're going to consume, we're going to consume the token, and it's not an operand. It is a number. And so what we need to do is pass on this token to T2. So here, here's an example from term. We get the number, and we need to pass it on to T2. So we have our, our number here called token. And then we're going to return the T2 of our token. So we check, we peek ahead. It's a number, yes, we consume it, and then we simply just pass that on to T2. So that handles term. And now let's go to our operand functions real quick, because those have already been implemented. As we can see, we changed operand to operand one and operand two. So we're simply just gonna split this into two different functions. So let me copy paste. 
where operand 1 is going to refer to addition and subtraction, whereas operand 2 is going to refer to multiplication and division. So now, unfortunately, this is all the time we have left for today. And in the next video, we're actually going to implement T1 and T2, because these are going to take some time and some logic to actually thoroughly go through them. So stay tuned.